Assalamu alaikum, respected viewers, brothers and sisters. May Allah's peace, mercy, blessings be on you. Welcome to the gems from the Quran. And alhamdulillah, in the previous episode we spoke about the virtues of Surah Al-Mulk, the chapter of Mulk, the dominion. And today, inshallah ta'ala, we will get into the Surah and we will try to feel and ponder upon the words of Surah Al-Mulk. Allah Almighty started the Surah by saying, Tabarak alladhi, or even before that what he says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, as always he starts all the chapters with this wonderful starting, which means in the name of Allah, the most compassion, the most merciful. Then Allah Almighty says, Tabarak alladhi biyadihi al-mulk, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir, which means, blessed is he, in whom hand is dominion, وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And he is over all things competent. And he is over everything is doable. He can do everything and anything. So what it means when he started the surah by saying تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكِ Blessed is he. He is starting by blessing himself and glorifying himself and saying that all the barakah, all the blessings, all the mercy, it comes from Allah Almighty. And he is also started by glorifying himself by letting us know that he is the complete, he is the only one, he is the one who bless other people, the blessings comes from him, he is the source of the blessings, he is the source of barakah, and he is the one who gives all these barakah to everyone. And he is trying to tell us, بِيَدِهِ mulk, In his hand, the dominion of all the thing, everything. Imagine, al-mulk. And also in other verse from the Quran, he says, مالك mulk, That he is the owner and dominion of all the entire world everything, the whole universe, he cont controls it. He does everything in it. So just imagine that he is controlling everything, everything literally. He is blessings, he is giving life, he is blessings and showing his mercy to the people and everything. He is the Lord of everything. He is the one who created the whole human being. Actually, today only, I was going through some figures and numbers and checking the population of the world. And I came to know that it is more than 7 billion, 7 billion. And he is controlling all these 7 billions and billions and billions came before. And the billions will come later on. He is taking control of everything. He is taking control of the heaven and the earth, the skies and the earth. He is taking care of the sun and the moon. He is taking care of the clouds and the rain and the wind and every single thing is happening in this world. He is taking care of. Biyadihi mulk He is controlling over everything and not only that. Wahua ala kulli shayin qadir. He is able and capable to do anything and everything. As the scholar says, that his command is between kaf and nun, which is kun, between only two letters in Arabic, kaf and nun, kun. He says to something kun, be, and it will be. He will not need time to make it. He will not need anything or any, he does not need equipments or anything. He is the Lord who deserves to be worshipped. The one who is controlling everything, the one who is controlling and managing everything. This is the Lord, Allah Almighty, the one God, who deserved to be worshipped. Can you imagine? This is our Rabb, this is our Lord. And we can continue, inshallah ta'ala, about more about Allah Almighty, but after the break, so stay with us, inshallah.
Welcome back, dear viewers. So, we are talking about the qudrah, the power, the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Almighty. And then, as I said, he said, وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And he is able and capable to do anything and everything at any time. So, he is the Lord of the universe. And then he says, in verse number two, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْغَفُورُ Which means, He who created death and life to test you as to which of you is best indeed. And He is the, the exalted in the might or in might and the most forgiven. Now, this is the translation, but let's go deep into these meanings and understand. First of all, he says, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ He is the one who created death and life. Now, even keep in your mind that everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Qur'an, he mentioned it for hikmah. He mentioned it for some wisdom. There is a wisdom behind it. So, what is the wisdom that Allah using mawt? First, the, the, the death first, then life. It should be other way around, right? Life and death. But no, Allah says the one who created death and life. Why? Because Allah Almighty even created the death. And we came out of nowhere. We were, we were actually before, you know, where we were. We were nowhere actually, you know. We were completely dead as Allah Almighty says. كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَكُنْتُمْ أَمْوَاتًا فَأَحْيَاكُمْ Imagine that Allah Almighty in some other chapter, Allah Almighty saying that كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ How you disbelieve in Allah Almighty وَكُنْتُمْ أَمْوَاتًا And you were dead فَأَحْيَاكُمْ And He put you into life. So even before existing to this world, we were dead. We were dead. We were living in, into the dead zone. And who created the dead zone? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the scholar says that we were dead, we came to life, we will die again, and then Allah Almighty will resurrect us. So there are four, cat, four ways and four levels that we were dead, we were not, you know, exist to this world. Then Allah Almighty created us, created us in this world, so we are alive. Then we all will die. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتِ We will die for sure. Then Allah Almighty will create and will make you come again to life on the day of judgment. So this is the process. Death, life, death, life. And then after that, it's unlimited life. Either in the hellfire or in the paradise. The choice is yours which path you want to select or which path you want to choose. Is it the path of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the path of all the prophets before him and the path of Allah Almighty or the path of your desire, the path of your own thinking by your thinking that, okay, I want to worship an idol or something like that. Or you will say that I want to worship nothing because I want to worship my own desire because I don't believe in God, I don't believe in this and that. The atheist, the concept of atheism and whatsoever. So it's your choice. You choose the guidance of the prophets and follow the path of Islam or you just simply choose whatever you want to choose. You might live in a good life and a nice life and lavish life, but at the end you will die. You will be resurrected on the day of judgment. You will pay for everything that you did. And the end is unlimited, infinity, either in the hellfire or in the paradise. So this is what he says, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ He also gave life to everyone. He also gave life to everyone. And just imagine that we are only talking about the first few words of, of this uh, chapter and this verse and the time is running out. So, we only spoke about four things. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ The one who created life, a death and life. What will happen next? You have to wait for me until the next episode and then we will continue, inshallah, 
So stay tuned, take care of yourself. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.